Hey guys, welcome to another Logic Pro X tutorial. Um, in the last two tutorials, we did uh, building filter sweeps. And somebody asked, uh, how would you do the uh, write in the automation for those filter sweeps? Right, let's quickly do that then. So um, when we're writing in automation to do a filter sweep, it's the same no matter what type of track we've got the filter on. In this case, I've got the filter on a bus track that the single instrument here is feeding into. But it might be a bus track that the entire mix is feeding into. Or it might be a filter that's strapped over a single audio track, just on that audio track. But no matter what type of track, whether it's a bus or an audio track that we're doing the filter sweep on, it's exactly the same. The first way to do it is to pencil in the sweep manually. So let's just extend this track down a bit in depth. So this single synth is feeding into this bus track. That is soloed as long as, as well as the drum machine. So we hear the, the synth and the drum machine. Without the filter, the synth and the drum machine together sound like this. Okay, so we are gonna manually pencil in a filter sweep. Um, so we'll put the filter on. And uh, we bring in the track automation here, yeah, track automation. Whoop. And the, one of the things about smart controls is once you've set up smart controls that are controlling parameters of an instrument or effects on a channel, then when you go to the track automation for that track or bus, the smart controls have their own little subcategory that you can choose to automate. You haven't got to search through all the actual parameters of the plugins. So there is the uh, the frequency. So we choose the frequency, pencil in a node, put it at the starting position. I want to start my sweep at about 70 hertz thereabouts. And I want it to sweep up across four bars to about 4K. And the, the end of the sweep happens at the beginning of bar five. And there it is, penciled in, one filter sweep. Right, obviously that can be any shape you want. You can put in extra nodes, you can make it you could make it rise up like that, you know, and then come back down. You can make it do, you know, anything you want. Anything you want. So now it's got a little bit of extra movement. It's gonna go up, come back down, and then go back up again. Here we go. Whatever, so do it however you like. Okay, so look, a basic filter sweep rising up from 70 ish K up to 3.5 K. There it is. Okay, now at bar 5, I want the filter to drop out, so I go to my track automation, smart controls, bypass for the channel EQ, pencil in, click click that puts in a single node this is the bypass node it's either fully at the top which is on or down whoop, fully at the bottom which is bypass so we want it on at the beginning so that EQ is on and at bar 5 we click in a node position it and just drag it right to the bottom and it snaps to the bottom like that and that's where the EQ is going to be bypassed and I want that to happen exactly at the beginning of bar 5 there we go so we got the sweep the sweep and the bypass at the end of uh, bar four. Here we go. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. On the drums, I'm just gonna put a fill in at the end of that, at the end of that section. Something like that, let's hear that. Yeah, there you go, right. Okay, so that's manually doing it, right, manually. Let me delete all the automation on this track. We should do mix, or delete automation, delete all automation, because I just want to get rid of everything, right? So back to where we were. No automation. Uh, so you pencil it in like that, or the other way is to use the smart controls to, to, to write it in. 
Another one of the advantages of smart controls is that once you've assigned one or more parameters of plug-in instruments or effects to smart controls, all you have to do is move that smart control uh, with the record on and it automatically writes the automation in that that smart control is assigned to. It writes the parameter in. It, it writes the automation in for the for the parameter that the smart or more than one parameter that the smart control is assigned to. So switch the EQ on. Let's write it in. All we have to do is put the player to the position where we want to begin writing the automation. We don't need the automation on. Hit record and just move the control to do the sweep. Now you'll notice that after the counting, so there's going to be a four, a, four, a four beat counting, a one bar counting. I'll wiggle the frequency control a little bit as soon as recording starts. That's to make sure that I get a node up for the lower frequency right at the beginning of, of uh, bar one. Here we go, hit record, two, three, four. There we go, and I've written my sweep in, but this time my sweep is written in as part of a, a MIDI region. It's inside the MIDI region rather than track automation lying over the top of regions as they do. So if we double click on this region and open it in Piano Edit and we open up, look, the automation, there's the sweep I just wrote in. And there's the opening node and that opening node you can drag it back and put it exactly on the first beat of the first bar if you like. So there it is, written in by moving the smart control part. Now, to do the dropout, there's no point doing it that way. There's no point like recording again and clicking the switch off when you want to drop the, the thing out. It, that doesn't really work. The best thing is to do that manually because you need an opening node with the uh, EQ on. Okay, and what you'd have to do is have it off and then as soon as you uh, the four bar counted up and you'd have to switch it on, and make sure you got that right on the first beat of the bar and then uh, switch it off where you wanted it off. So it's probably better to just manually write that in. So I bring in the automation and on top of this region where we just recorded in that filter sweep, the movement of this pot, we'll just pencil in the dropout as we did before. But this time we're penciling it in over the top of this region that has got the sweep inside it. So smart controls, bypass, bam, put in the node, it's on up there, look, look, on, and then on bar five there, I want it off, oh, doink, come on, there you go, bypassed at the beginning of bar five like that, there we go, so inside the region is the sweep and over the top is the automation that turns the filter off just there. <clears throat> okay, done and dusted. And that's it, it's as simple as that. Now, uh, let's turn the automation off. Now, one thing to note is I moved the smart control here to write in that automation. These smart controls can be very easily assigned to hardware controllers. I'm not going to go into any detail here about how to do that, but you just bring in the edit, choose the part click the learn button, move a, a slider or a pot on your hardware controller and it's learnt. That's it, unlatch and you're ready to go. But for a full tutorial on absolutely everything to do with smart controls, and I mean everything, stuff you're not going to get on other tutorials from other people, go to our channel, search for smart controls and you'll find a full hour long in-depth tutorial all about smart controls and I can assure you Absolutely everything that you need is in that tutorial, including some stuff you won't find elsewhere. Okay, so there you go, that's writing in the automation. There are two different ways to do it do it manually by moving the controller, whether you do it with the mouse or assign this pot to a hardware controller, or just pencil it in. Yeah, and that's how you would create automation for your filter sweeps. I hope that's useful.